I'm short-sighted, minus 1.25. Before the TBI, I could wear my glasses. After the TBI, vision is blurry when looking at objects close to me with the glasses on. So now I have to take off my glasses for close objects and then put them back on for far objects. Any thoughts on this? I have a lot of thoughts on this. This is a really important question because it's one that comes up for a lot of people. Um, there's a high percentage of people that after a traumatic brain injury either have to get glasses or change their prescription. Why? I think about it a couple ways. Number one, if we're seeing, especially with depth changes, that there's a problem, we want to know if the point of regard is able to be maintained between your eyes. What the heck does that mean? What that means is my eyes, wherever I'm looking in space, whether it's near or whether it's far, I want both of my eyes to point at that target and to be able to see it overlaid. So it's kind of like I want to have both eyes locked in on one target. If they're not able to do that and the eyes are slightly askew, then that target's going to kind of look a little split like this. But if it's not really split a lot, it might just look a little blurry. Maybe a better way to look at it would be like, you know, like this, where it would just split slightly. And if it splits slightly, we're going to get a little blur on it. So that's one way is if there's a problem with ocular alignment. When the ocular alignment problems are static, I'm not moving, my head isn't moving, I'm not moving my eyes, then we want to think about how the central vestibular system is contributing to your vision, meaning how does the otolith in particular affecting the station of your eyes. And then that can be exacerbated by moving forward. So a lot of times when people are moving in closer, we will notice that their near point of convergence or like how far can you go before your eyes like lose the target may be further out and they may not be able to focus clearly coming in and that tells us that the ability for the eyes to be able to do the normal management of moving in here has a smaller range of motion so people will find that it gets blurry up close the same thing can happen going far though where people can read up close and then when they try to go far it doesn't break away as well and then it gets blurry so that's how we would think about it in terms of if it is static not moving and if it is a problem with the ocular alignment we think about the central vestibular system how we are interpreting gravity okay number two you may find that people also get just fatigued so like if i'm reading or if i'm doing a lot with my eyes i'm scrolling i'm moving them a lot that as they're moving they become less sharp so their ability to be accurate in the movement starts to fail and then we see things start to blur okay so in this case we may not be our body might be still but our eyes are moving and when your eyes are moving if they're inaccurate we may interpret that as blur and then we want to look at is that from something where we're tracking in a pursuit or jumping in a saccade like dr sylvia had mentioned or is it from reflexive activity moving or changes in the depth field and then we can isolate it down then you'd want to think about is the problem more related to when you are moving or when you're moving your neck so sometimes like when you're looking straight ahead it's great but then we'll have people just turn their head do the same task read the same thing and then it gets blurry turn your head pitch your head forward pull your head back tilt your head back and we can see if the clarity changes there then it may be due to the way that your neck talks to that central vestibular system okay and then the last one I'll note is that we can change the integrity of your vision, the clarity of your vision, with the ability to perfuse the eye. So that blood flow coming up into the brain, also coming up into the eye, if that blanches out or we get some restriction to flow, then you might notice like an eye gets blurry and you'll especially see that if you compare them one to the other. Or we can have problems with um, constriction of the lens where the lens becomes less uh, less flexible or the pupil isn't able to engage as well so all of these are different mechanisms that it can occur and that can yield blurry vision on the other side especially after a TBI so um, if you were working with someone that was helping you understand that then that would kind of be some of the paces that you might go through in order to be able to figure out how to understand the underlying problem and then get after solving it cool um, so hopefully that's useful.